Hey friends, it's Haya Grossberg. I haven't made a video in a really long time, so I just wanted to check in with my people, give you guys an update on um, just how things are over here. And, you know, I think we're always kind of, um, we're always out there in the very complicated world we're living in right now, and it can get kind of lonely or confusing especially at this time of the year, I think sometimes we can get isolated or sort of um, lost in our own darkness, for lack of a better term. And that's that's been happening for me. Um, I've had multiple injuries this month and um, now I have an infection because I was given antibiotics even though I didn't need them. And um, that led to another infection and um, yeah, it's been a pretty frustrating time, and I know for those of you who struggle with um, coming off psychiatric drugs or who have come off of them, you know how frustrating the medical system can be and how confusing it can be um, when you're given medical advice that, um, you know, you don't know whether or not to follow, and there's there's a lot of fear in that. And something I've been thinking about, something I think about a lot, is um, like what's what's underneath whatever it is, whether it's, um, you know, an emotional symptom or a physical symptom or an illness or an injury, whatever it is. I know that for myself, there's always some kind of connection, like where it's tying into something in my life, which doesn't mean that I can always tell what, what that connection is at the time. Um, sometimes I have like an inkling, I'm like, I... <clears throat> I'm like, I know that this has to do with, like, this person who just kind of came into my life, or this has to do with this project that I'm working on that I feel a little bit unsure of how to move forward with, or maybe scared, or maybe I want to just plunge forward and the universe is like, no, like, you need to stop. Um, that's not how we're going to do this. And um, I've been getting the intuition about my online course um, for... <clears throat> for coming off psychiatric drugs to work with someone else. And since I haven't been able to use my hands very much in the past week, um, I got the inspiration to ask on Facebook for someone to help me edit it. And um, one of the people that came forward is somebody that I think I'd be very excited to collaborate with. So I will keep you posted on that, or I'm sure you'll, you'll hear about it. But um, the other thing is... Um, sometimes there are these complications in our relationships and it's like, how do I communicate with this person or how do I speak up for myself or, um, <clears throat> or just like what's going on with this person and me. And, um, I know for myself, those types of questions and confusions can manifest in my body like really fast. Like my body is, is like screaming at me and I'm like, what are you saying? I don't know. Um, I know you're telling me something about this, but I don't know what you're telling me exactly or how to um, deal with it. And it reminds me again of this quote, which I actually said in Daniel Mackler's film, Coming Off Psych Drugs, but uh, or it's not a quote, it's like a little story, but it's basically like when you want something to happen like yesterday, when you're really impatient and you feel frustrated and you're in pain or you just you can't move forward with something, there's like a stuckness. Um, if you try too hard, that can actually delay the process. So it's like, um, sometimes just not trying is, is like the way to go at a certain point. Cause I know for myself, like I have all these herbs, I have all these remedies, all these supplements, all these foods, um, all these like health practices and, um, so many things to do, um, for like every type of health problem that I've been studying for my whole life. But then, like, a lot of times <clears throat> I'll reach, like, a point where it's, like, I'm done. Like, <laughs> where it's, like, everything in me says, um, you're done. Like, like none of these things are going to work at this point. You have to, and it's not to say, like, I'm going to stop eating or stop taking my herbs and supplements, but, like, I sometimes get to, like, this wall where it's, like, no, this isn't about finding the next herb or the next supplement or getting on the absolute perfect regimen, at least for me. Maybe for some people it is. But for me, I usually get to a point where I'm, like, no, this is the universe trying to tell me something, and I need to maybe just lie in bed all day or maybe keep reaching out and asking um, friends to talk or... Um, 
I mean, I think it's always good to reach out and keep asking for help from people who can be, you know, who we have a sense, like, maybe I can trust this person, maybe they have good advice, or maybe <clears throat> they're a good listener, or will help me to be able to navigate this. Um, but sometimes we're like, I, I know for myself, sometimes I'm like, who do I ask for help in this situation? Like, is there anyone even equipped to assist me or... Or I'm just so swimming in it that I don't even know how to figure out who to ask for help or how or even what I need, you know. Because there's always like these multiple things happening at the same time. Like there's the emotional element and there's the physical element. And um, like the circumstantial element of things that can all get very confusing. I'm like, well, which is really the priority right now, you know. And um, I think like both need to be addressed, but it can be complicated. And I know that a lot of us are going through stuff right now. I know a lot of us are having health issues. A lot of us are feeling stuck or confused or just overwhelmed that we can't like get to where we want to be in our lives now, you know, <laughs> or, and we felt that way for a long time. Um, so I'm just, I'm really grateful actually just to be making this video because I haven't made any videos in a long time. And I think a few years ago I was really on this kick of like unsilencing myself, of speaking, of making videos, of blogging, of um, doing public speaking, of like really making sure I'm speaking and not, not letting myself fall silent because that's been a sort of a pattern for me in my adult life is like falling silent and... This past year or two, I've I've been in a more silent mode. Like, I've been more behind the scenes. I haven't really wanted to be public. I haven't felt quite comfortable um, sharing my process or, or myself vulnerably publicly. I'm not sure if it has something to do with that I moved to Olympia and it's a small town. And I wasn't quite ready to... Um, be my myself I guess to put it simply <laughs> I felt like I wanted to hide or I just wanted to be quiet I wanted to be internal I didn't know I didn't really even feel like I had anything to say to the world um, I mean there's always a lot to say to the world there there's always like I always feel this kind of weight and this heaviness and this burden of like things I want to say to the world but I don't know how to or like um, Things that, yeah, things that, like, I feel like no one else is saying and I need to say that. And then some of them can be, like, intensely personal and I'm like, can I say that? Um, do I want to say that publicly? Um, you know, like, one of the things, well, this one isn't that personal. It's just more of a controversial viewpoint. But something I think about a lot, all the time, every day, is pets and you know, pet culture, because the town that I'm living in, I mean, most of America and a lot of the world is very pet friendly and pet oriented and pet centric, you could say. Olympia is very pet centric. And um, I was thinking about like, you know, I, I constantly try to assess like, what is this? Why do people need to have pets? Why, why is it acceptable for humans to have pets, for animals to be our pets? Why is that so widespread? Not only accepted, but so celebrated that that we have turned animals into our pets. Um, and I know there's probably tons of backlash on this because most people I know love pets. Um, I've personally been allergic to them my whole life, so um, I haven't had much of a chance to totally love them. But um, but I also like in the past five years or so, I've started to really think critically about what is it like why do people love pets and it's it's weird because I can't relate but at the same time I was thinking yesterday about um about like what we project onto pets like what we love about them and what they are you know so basically what people seem to love about pets is that they're cute um they're they're kind of lacking in autonomy you know like they're they're owned by people so they're yours they're your pet and um they exist for you in in the eyes of you know i mean of course people also feel that, that they exist for their pets so there's there is a sense of that relationship there but it's not like a relationship of equality or or um where like both 
pe people, where both parties have equal say and equal power, it's really a power over relationship. But that's not, <laughs> I don't want to get too into that part because I know that that can be triggering for people um, or like create a sense of defensiveness. But what I do want to talk about is like what we project onto pets that I think we as humans need to own because it's like this shadow side of humanity is um, the cute, lovable being that can just be there and be loved because that's what I see as what we what we love about pets is that they can just sit around all day and be cute and we still love them you know or at least pet owners and pet lovers do they love their pets just for being cute just for being and being cute and um whatever they do is cute they don't have to like work they don't have to go to a job they don't have to you know, I mean, they could, I guess, go out and hunt, but they don't have to. They could just eat whatever you give them and just hang out all day, and and they're cute and, um, you know, cuddly and, and lovely. And I've been thinking about how those are, like, all the qualities that we actually downplay in our society, like the qualities that we as a society look down on. You know, somebody who's lazy just expects to, like, be given to, given handouts or just sitting around all day, um, or like not working, not doing anything, um, things like that. So I, I had that epiphany the other day and it was cool because it made me realize that like, rather than having to project that out onto pets, we can actually reintegrate that into like our reality. And it's not that that should be all that we do or all that we aspire to, but like, you know, it's it's something that we love. We love that quality. Um, and and then but since it's so shadow in our culture, since we since we we both love it but say we hate it <laughs> and shame it and fear it, um, and project it out onto pets, it's like um we don't necessarily get to own it and say like, well, sometimes I just want to be cute. I just want to sit around and have people think I'm cute and like love me, love on me just for being me, just for just for sitting around all day or just just for being me, you know, like I can be loved just for being me and cute and I can be cute and, um, you know, maybe somebody will just like curl up and pet me, curl up with me and pet me and I can just like hang out there for a while and not have any other obligations and, and that's okay, you know? Um, so I think there's like that need in society. There's like this need for us to be able to have like spaces where we can be quote unquote pets, where we can just be cute and loved and like just loved on and doted on and like have that time and that space. So that's just one of the things I've been thinking about and, um, had a whole lot of other thoughts lately about about women and um, and sexuality and gender that maybe I'll talk about in another video, <laughs> but um, it's it's good to just uh, make this video and and just say hi and let you know like I'm here in Olympia. It's been an interesting couple of years. I've been here for two and a half years now. My birthday's coming up in uh, on December thirty first. And, um, you know, it's been, it's been a wild life, but the past couple years I've been very simple. Like my life has been super simple. I'm living in a small studio apartment here and it, it's been really for me about grounding and not moving anymore for now. Really my goal a couple of years ago was to stop moving. And I moved into this very small apartment and I, I like it. It's, it's an interesting, um, mysterious time. I don't necessarily feel 100% in love with Olympia, but it's where I am. And, you know, the world is where it's at. And I feel like something about the way the world is and, like, the way my health and life are, it's like I've needed this really, really simple, just totally bare bones kind of life where, like, I just focus on things that make me feel grounded every day unfortunately have not been able to write as much this week or for or today and a couple days last week I wasn't able to write and I'm sure you guys know how um, hard that is for me and how crazy it makes me feel so it's good to just be able to talk to you and maybe I'll make another video tomorrow with some other thoughts but thanks for watching and let me know how you're doing